Hey guys, how's it going? Sean here. So I've been checking out the Source Audio C4 synth. It's primarily a synth pedal, but it can actually do so much more than that. So what I thought I'd do today is showcase five cool tones and presets that I created using the synth and using the Source Audio Neuro Editor on the computer where I programmed everything. And yeah, basically show off the tones and show you a little bit of what this pedal can do. Up, I've got a preset called Mono Lo-Fi Chorus. Let's open up the Neuro Editor and I'll show you how I created the preset in just a second, but let's just take a listen to it first. Here is my dry signal. It's just a DI'd guitar, so no amp or anything. Just a tiny bit of compression and EQ to filter off the top end, but it's just a straight up DI guitar. All right, I'm gonna turn on the C4 synth. kind of a cool lo-fi tape warble effect going on. If we take a look at the Neuro editor here, I can show you how I created it. So the C4 synth has four main voices, which you can see here. Each of these voices can just be your guitar dry signal, any one of these oscillators, which is what the synth section is, which I'll go over in just a little bit. But you can also use these polyphonic pitch effects. So what this is doing is it's taking my guitar signal and then it's delaying it slightly. There's a bit of latency just because it needs to, time to process everything I do to the signal, but I'm using the polyphonic pitch one here in voice one. I've got a little bit of tremolo dialed in and a bit of detune, and I have this modulated. So if we scroll down here to this LFO section, I'm using a sample and hold, which is kind of a random wave shape for the LFO, and I'm using that to adjust the amount of detune, so the pitch drifts up and down, creating that kind of lo-fi warble effect. So we actually have a second LFO that can be adjusted depending on the um, setting that we've got here. So I have LFO 2 set to be 32 times the speed of LFO 1. And you might ask like, why the hell would I want an LFO to be that fast? And it's because of this tremolo section. I've got LFO2 set as my modulator, and this is creating kind of really cool dropouts in the audio. So let me turn this down and show you what it just sounds like with the tape warble. And I'll turn up the tremolo. So you'll notice there as the note rang out, you can hear the kind of dropouts and that kind of crackly sound combined with the tape warble, like the pitch effect, kind of creates a pretty convincing tape warble effect, which is uh, which is really cool. Now, I said there was a little bit of latency, so it's a small delay between what I play and what I hear. But if you're just doing nice sustained chords, that's not really an issue. But what we can do is we can back the mix dial down on the pedal. And now we've got the lo-fi warble effect as our wet signal, blending in with our dry signal. And we're basically using the modulated effect as like a lo-fi tape chorus, which is kind of cool. <laughs> Now I also have voice two set up using polyphonic pitch two, which is just another duplicate of my dry signal. But this time I have this pitched up one octave and I have the volume of this voice assigned to control two here. So if I increase this, I'll introduce a higher octave signal into the wet signal. So let me back this down a little bit, turn the mix up a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit of stereo delay and reverb using the Source Audio Collider. I'm just going to switch that in and we've got a pretty cool lo-fi tape warble chorus effect. Alright, so next up I've got a preset I called Stereo Riffage. Terrible name, I know. This time I'm using all four voices of 
the C4 synth as oscillators. So the pedal is taking my dry signal, it's converting it into a synth signal, and uh, using these oscillators I've dialed in a pretty big sounding stereo mono synth. So for voice one I'm using a saw wave, voice two I'm using a saw wave as well, and for voice three and four I'm both using a square wave. So you can see here in the processor pan section, voice one pan to the left, voice two pan to the right, same with voice three and four, and I have them slightly detuned from each other. Adding some detune on a synth between oscillators can just add some cool depth, and because I have these panned stereo left and right as well, it helps adding, you know, quite a lot of depth and width to the to the signal. From here I'm running it into a double fold over overdrive and then I have it run into a low pass filter. I won't go over every parameter in the neuro editor because there's so many parameters this video would take quite a long time, but the filter and the voices are controlled using these envelopes here. So I have this dialed in to kind of interact with my playing dynamics and the filter opens accordingly. So The reason I call this stereo riffage is because I have a pan left and right, I thought it could be cool to add some synth width and a sub bass to a guitar riff. So I've got the C4 synth running in the effects loop of a Line 6 Helix. And here is the C4 synth blended back in with the heavy guitar tone. Alright, so next up I've got a preset I called Mono Dirty Filter, another terrible name. This is basically trying to emulate a really cool, slightly dirty, a low pass envelope filter. Previously we were using the polyphonic pitch setting, but we can also just choose the dry signal via this mono input here. What is really cool is we can run this dry signal into the distortion effects and also all of the filters. I won't go over all of them, but there are quite a lot of filter types, so there's quite a lot of room for, uh, for experimentation with this. So here's my dry signal. And here is with the C4 synth. Now I also have controls one and two on the pedal assigned to the, let's have a look, the filter one frequency and also the depth which is how much the envelope is affecting the frequency amount. So let's turn the filter down a little bit. So now the uh, frequency is a little bit lower so it's opening a little bit less. Turn that up again. Now you'll notice that it's quite dynamic and it really responds well to your playing. But if you want the filter to open up a little bit more, we can do that with control two. So yeah, that's the mono dirty filter. So next up I've got a preset called Stereo Bass Funk. The reason I say stereo in the title is because it's utilizing the stereo outputs of the C4 synth. You can use the pedal in a traditional mono setup, just mono in and mono out, but I find for guitarists and if you want to get into some of the more creative aspects of it, and also in a studio setting, running it in stereo can kind of open up a whole world of, uh, of possibilities with it. So. <laughs> Now this preset is set up in a very similar way to the uh, stereo riffage preset we had earlier. For voice two, I'm using a saw wave, voice three saw wave as well. These are panned both left and right and detuned as well. And I'm using a square wave panned up the middle. This is set to minus one octave and the saw waves are set both to minus two octaves. So we have a tiny bit of an octave spread there as well. But for the super low end, I also have a sine wave set to minus two octaves and that's panned up the middle and uh, it's also turned up the loudest as well. So we have 
have the most low end. I've got the sine wave run directly to the output, so it's not going through the distortion and the filters, but all the other three oscillators are. Now this time for control one, I have this set to be the frequency amount and control two is set to be the speed of the envelope. Now I'm going to bring the filter up a little bit more, but this time I'm going to adjust control two. So at its lowest settings, we've got this. So the speed of the decay is set to be quite slow in this setting, but as we increase this, we basically are shortening the decay and it's just getting snappier and snappier. So. So yeah, that's the stereo bass funk preset. Lastly, I've got a preset called DNB Swell. DNB standing for drum and bass. So I've designed this preset to work with bass guitar straight away, but it can easily be adjusted for electric guitar or any other instrument just by adjusting the octaves in the voices section. So I'm using two square waves, oscillator one and two are both square waves, panned left and right and also detuned a little bit to get that cool, you know, Reese drum and bass so bass. I've got LFO2 here modulating the tremolo of both of these oscillators. Basically the LFO is modulating the tremolo in eighth notes. And it sounds like this. So it's kind of a subtle effect. Let me increase the tremolo a little bit so you can hear it a bit more obviously. There we go. So you don't want that to be too much. You just want it to add a tiny bit of, uh, of movement. Voices three and four are both sine waves. One is set to be a just a straight octave of what I'm playing. And the other one is set to be seven semitones above. So a fifth above the note. These are both run to the direct output. So they're not run through the filters or the overdrive, but the first two oscillators are. So for the envelope setting, I'm using the swell option. That's just adding a nice volume swell into each note, which works really well for uh, sub bass style playing. The sub bass is always audible, but because the swell setting is affecting the other two oscillators and the filter cutoff, the brightness of the filter and the two square waves only kind of comes into effect on more sustained notes. For control one here, I have this assigned to the filter cutoff. I also, I won't even pretend to say that I'm a bass player because I'm really not. So uh, excuse the bad bass playing. But yeah, hopefully this kind of showcases some of the cool effects that you can create using the C4 synth from Source Audio. All right, so that was a quick look at five cool tones using the C4 synth from Source Audio. I'll have these five presets published in the Source Audio Neuro community. So if you have a C4 synth yourself, you can uh, you can check them out. Hope you enjoyed the video and please hit the like button for the, uh, the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see some more content from me, please consider subscribing as well and hit the little bell icon so that you can be notified of when I put out some new videos. You can find me on Instagram at Sean Murray Guitar. Anyways, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.